Hello, everyone, and welcome back to uh, this week's episode on an- of Anime on Draft. Excuse me. Um, episode 10, I believe. Uh, my name We've is Andrew, 10. and uh, joining me, as always, are my co-host, Rolando. What's up? And Alec. Hey, yo. So uh, we got a jam-packed lineup for you this week. Uh, super hyped to talk about uh, this week's episode of Attack on Titan. And unfortunately, after that, we only have one more episode to go. So, no. you know, kind of sad that it's ending, but it, it it's, it's had a good run. And uh, so we're looking looking forward to talking about that. Also, we're going to be talking about uh, Soccer Quest, a um, little bit about Arrow Manga. And uh, do you guys have anything this week for uh, Sakurata? No. I think we'll do a separate one for that. Mm-hmm. A separate one. Right Thing. We'll do. We don't want to take too long in this. Two sure. weeks of Sakurada as a separate segment, like we did uh, the other week. Well, cool. We'll uh, definitely be looking forward to that. Uh, but first off, uh, as always, is uh, this week's uh, beer. Um, Rolanda, you chose it. So, do you want to go ahead and introduce it? Yeah, this is the Samuel Adams New World. It is a Belgian triple. It is ale and a Belgian triple ale, sorry, aged in oak barrels. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, so I saw this on the shelves at Bevmo, and the bottle itself looks pretty interesting. It's got um, a few ships on the front and a barrel, some looks like mermaids and, and stuff. It looked pretty cool. Um, the bottle itself kind of looks like a barrel, but uh, it this actual specific design, um, as Alec can talk about in a bit, is pretty bad for the pores because you just get a shit ton of head coming out of the bottle. And, it's ridiculous. Um, it, yeah, it makes it very hard to uh, pour. But I just picked it because I was, I looked at the bottle, thought it looked cool, and I do like my Belgian ales and this is a Belgian triple. So yeah, Mm. I had a similar experience with the head. Um, when I was pouring it as well, I, uh, I, I think it's the bottle type. Cause whenever you get these like wine bottle types or anything with like a long neck like this, it, it funnels all the, the liquid in there and then you're pouring it and it's like glug, 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 glug. And you just know that it's like churning up the beer in there and it comes out and you get like, I got like 75% head to 25% beer liquid. And, uh, it's, it's just, it's a rough one to pour. So definitely be careful. I also have had the experience where I opened the bottle, uh, a bottle like this and, and uncorked it and it was fine. But then I went and I poured it. And then as soon as I stopped pouring it, it just overflowed. The thing was like exploding out of the top. So, uh, definitely one that you want to be a little careful, you know, pour over a sink, if you've got a sink nearby, which I'm assuming everybody has a sink in their house. Um, so, you know, just, uh, oh, assuming be sinks careful. in 2017. <laughs> hey, I'm not assuming genders. All right. <laughs> not assuming genders. Watch out also, for rich hobos. Probably a shout out to your bag boy who, uh, knocked it over. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Buying it. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah, may I have had, I... uh, something to do with that. It could, it could. I, uh, I bought this at smart and final and they apparently like to knock over beers over there <laughs> it's very hard to, go- to bag a bottle it is well he didn't even bag it he went to reach for it to like scan it and it just went bam <laughs> just like i mean it's hard, hard to, it's hard to grab because you know bottles are that very unruly shape yeah 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 i agree <laughs> uh, the the neck is definitely not like it's too big for your hand yeah. you know yeah it's just you can't grab it anywhere there's nowhere there's good nowhere to grab, to it. grab it yeah exactly <laughs> it's like a weird 40 by 40 inch square and you have to use your whole body to lift it's just weird you know, th- thumbs are a pretty complicated uh a thing you know they just are like yeah having a po- having them be opposable and one day we'll catch know. up to monkeys but yeah not yet <laughs> well right on um i didn't have as bad as experience with uh, my poor i kind of just uncorked this guy but i did do it over the sink um but no explosion. I got like a, a little bit of a head, but it wasn't like overwhelming and it kind of dissipated pretty quickly. So my my experience, I think, was a little bit better than uh, your guys's. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, the head that because I've been pouring it like 
I poured it and then I let the head disappear and then I poured some more and let it disappear and poured it. The third time I poured it, it's, you know, it looks like a normal beer, but that head has stuck around for a long time. I have to say, um, the, Mm -hmm. the initial stuff dissipated pretty quickly, but this stuff I've got right here, it's staying on the top there really for a long time. And, uh, but you know, let me, it's, it's got a really nice color too. It's kind of like a golden Amber, I guess. It's very golden, know. yeah. Yeah, it's like golden. It's really cool. You I've got see. it in a tulip glass. Yes, I do Just. too. You can see the carbonation, I was about to say, mm-hmm. in the in when you have a tulip glass like this, and you can tell why the foam is so unruly just because of yeah. all the bubbles rising from mm-hmm. the bottom. It's super bubbly. It's like <laughs> not quite like that, but yeah, you know. <laughs> what do you guys I don't know think how of the flavor? Um, let's see. It's good. Um, it definitely a typical tastes like a typical Belgian. Um, yeah, triple. They say on the bottle here a golden triple with notes of spice and tropical fruit. I definitely get spice and fruit. It's very fruity. So it's very fruity, and then the aftertaste is spice. Is mm-hmm, for me. Yeah. It's like um, that spice everyone always uses. Uh, shoot, I don't remember Coriander. which one. The coriander yeah <laughs> tastes like that i'm like there's that one that everyone always uses tastes like that whether they yeah, use I definitely it or get not the coriander yeah. it also has the aftertaste or the finish uh of what you'd expect from an uh an aged beer mm-hmm. um do you know how long they age these um, trying to, back. trying to well, read about it but it does not say on the back it's not like it doesn't uh, yeah. have like that almost like soury wine flavor of like super long aged uh, right. beers or anything like right. that. But you definitely have that finish of you like, OK, this was definitely aged uh, for mm-hmm. at least some some amount of time. Yeah, it's got kind right. of like that earthy like wood tone mm-hmm. or notes. I'm not sure if um, like so there's double, triple, quad. Uh, I'm not sure if there's like an age requirement for it to meet that type you know that name or whatever so there might there might be a a specific amount of time they have to age it for, maybe if it's a triple it's like three months i don't know that, that would be my guess um, <laughs> i don't know i don't know that's something we should probably study up on <laughs> yeah i'm gonna look for it sure. up and make a quick blog post about it yeah that's what a uh idea. they say like there's like fruity flavors what kind of fruits do you think are in this hmm well from smell I can't really like pin it down like easily. From smell, I can't really tell. Um, I think there's like lemon. They say tropical like, fruits on it. Yeah. So, mm, maybe mango. <laughs> I don't think it's I don't, mango. I don't think <laughs> but that's I a taste lemon. Fruit. But anything else, I I can't really. I'm getting a lot of right coriander. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's super spicy. I bet um, you there's bananas. Maybe. <laughs> I think there's bananas. I don't I don't know if that's what bananas taste like, but you know, maybe you can like, maybe they do. Maybe they just squashed up a, a banana and, you know, <laughs> coated the barrel in uh, banana grease. I'm trying to Dude. think like what what tropical fruits would you use? Like passion uh, fruit? Pineapple? <clears throat> Pine- yeah, maybe no. pineapple. I was actually. thinking maybe pineapple. I actually do think there is banana cuz like there's a bitterness of the fruitiness and banana peels are kind of bitter. So I don't know. Um, definitely coriander, coriander. It's hoppy. It's pretty, there's hoppy another too. spice in there. I think cinnamon, but I, I think cinnamon or I was thinking cloves. So kind of along the same line, yeah. maybe, maybe all spice, maybe that's kind of got like a little coriander, cinnamon, all the kind of things that we mentioned before mm-hmm. kind of in there. So, I think cloves and allspice are also fairly common in mm-hmm. in beer brewing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think Definitely. pear? Possibly. Maybe. For the fruit? <clears throat> it's hard to discern. It's hard, sure. yeah. Because I'm sure they use, like, a lot of people use dried fruits. Don't That's they? That's true. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, it kind of mutes their flavor the a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it, like, yeah. um, kind of referencing... Um, Shokugeki no Soma, the the Food Wars <laughs> anime. They do talk about when they're talking about sun dried tomatoes. They they talk about how when you 
sun dry a fruit like that, it concentrates the umami of that specific fruit into a smaller air like umami area. Des. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that could be why they they do that for brewing on top of the fact that they probably don't want extra water in the right. mixture. Mm-hmm. Can we get another season of that? Just throwing that out there. <laughs> more loot Whoever's cooking. in charge here. of that, can we just uh, get one more of those? <laughs> you know something I have to say about this beer? Sorry, going back to it, is it's a 10 point or a 10% alcohol, but it doesn't really taste str- like strongly of alcohol. You get it, but it's not like, yeah, it's 10%. I just looked at the bottle. And I, Any of these and I was, aged ones are usually not, pretty high, but I yeah. definitely, like what you're saying, it's it's doesn't feel that intense. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't like get it in your face. Normally on ones that, that strong, unless it's like a, a stout with like, you know, coffee or chocolate where it really masks all the other flavors, um, you get that kind of punch in your face and I mm-hmm. don't get this mm-hmm. at all. Right. When you uh, when you drink this though, you do kind of get that alcoholy like uh, heat or fumes or whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. going up through your your nose a little bit. It kind of so in your it, chest. It is, it, yeah, it is. It is a little pungent, but it's not like it doesn't kill it for you. Like you know, when you take like a shot of vodka and you're just like <laughs> breathing heavy for a second, you're just like. <laughs> well, besides the fact that, that, that burns, yeah. shots of vodka <laughs> suck. So there's also. But that I mean, issue. you know, the, the same uh, the yeah. same sort of like vis- the visceral experience that you get of like the heat of the alcohol going through mm-hmm. your sinuses, right. and things like that. You get that a little bit. It's like very muted in this, so it's kind of pleasant. But you're not like, oh my god, this is straight fucking alcohol. It's like a nice <laughs> you know I mean? warm, rather yeah, than yeah. a this burns warm. <laughs> Cool. It's good. I like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's it's definitely tasty. I was like, hmm, I wonder how it's gonna be, but uh, they did a good job. I have to say, yeah, I'm actually I'm a thoroughly big fan impressed of uh, of Sam Adams. Yeah, like, same here. They're they're kind of you kind of think of them almost like this big like like Bud Light brewery or something like this, but they're actually they're not, not that big. They yeah. do like very <laughs> no. like crafty style beers, and they just kind of blew up and and stuff like that, but. A lot of the things they do, they do it with passion and they do it really well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of, you know, the Boston Lager. Um, I think they have like a, I think it's like a Harvest, like Oktoberfest sort of beer that's really yes, good. I like that beer um, a lot. That one is like super good uh, during, you know, October time. I, I always think get I've a six pack of that. Have I? Um, I highly, highly it. recommend I, when I, it's in season. I recommend that too. Yeah. But you know, I'm I'm a big fan of their brewery. You know, they they blew up, but you know, they're they're still sticking to their roots and they're they're doing it right. And they're you know always coming up with like I've never heard of this one before, but they're always coming out with like new things. It seems, yeah. um, and I'm always I'm always really impressed with uh, their flavors and different things like that. So yeah, I was a little worried about it just because I've had some some Belgians that just went horribly wrong, mm. and I never know Belgian ales, Belgian not, not ales, actual yeah. Belgians. No, no, no. <laughs> this God, this Belgian person I met just went horribly. No, no, Belgian ales. I've had some Belgian ales that just you could tell were not. They weren't good. You're like this isn't this is bad. But uh, this one is supply, surprisingly pleasant. So, so I'm uh, quite happy. Before uh, we continue on to the rating, I'm just gonna read what it says on the back of the bottle. Um, so, this triple was born from the old world. Europe. I mean, that's not what it says, but I'm, I'm adding that. <laughs> Belgian technique of barrel aging and the new world, America. Again, it doesn't say that. Of <laughs> craft brewing innovation. <laughs> With its pale golden color and uniquely refreshing taste, this big, flavorful, and complex brew has a subtle Beer. herbal doesn't hop character I'm adding it. combined with the <laughs> tropical fruit and spice notes of its special Belgian yeast. Hmm. One of our brewer's favorite places to experiment is in the barrel room at our Boston brewery. It's here that each of our Samuel Adams barrel room collection brews was born. Interesting. To learn more they about this like unique set the, of ales, visit the... samueladams.com. <laughs> oh, yes. Don't forget. <laughs> they have they have two. Um, I think all the uh, the special brews that they're talking about, this barrel room collection, they have that BRC stamp on it and then the mm-hmm. label also at the top of... Uh, of the uh, bottle as well. So, you know, mm-hmm. you're getting something a little special, a little customized uh, when you're drinking one of these things. So super, super cool. They like to experiment. Yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, I'll probably nudge. keep the cork. I, I mean, I like, 
And this cork, it's kind of cool. The cork is know. pretty cool. <laughs> I like the bottle. I'm going to keep it. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, interesting for sure. I might keep it, but I don't need more shit. So. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I you've seen so the top stuff. of my fridge, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just There's a, you have a, lot of a billion bottles up there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Alec, uh, let's start with you. Uh, what do you want to What do you want to rate this guy? Um. So, definitely a good flavor. Um, and for it being how strong it is, it's not really kicking me in the in the stomach. So I think I'm gonna give it a four. I think that's uh, where it's sitting for me. It's definitely really good. Awesome, uh, Rolando. What are you thinking? Yeah. So. One of the main reasons why I chose this, besides the cool bottle look, is that I am a big fan of Sam Adams. Um, they are one of the first uh, craft breweries that kind of exploded nationwide. Um, kind of like how Ballast Point is nowadays, and like to some extent, Stone. like St. Archer and like some like Lagunitas, yeah. all of those places. And um, yeah, this is a. Thumbs up in my book. I'm I'm going to say it's not it's not the best Belgian triple I've had and it's not the best Belgian style ale I've had, but it's good. It's got a nice set of unique flavors and it's not very off-putting as Alec mentioned as some Belgian ales can be. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give it a 4 as well. Cool, cool. Um, for me, I, I really like the spiciness. I like, um, you know, we were trying to discern what type of fruit it was, but, uh, you know, not, I mean, who knows? It could be a little bit of anything, but, you know, definitely tropical, fruity, spicy. I like all those things about it. Um, and again, the drinkability that you guys have been talking about too is, you know, even though it's kicking, kicking you in the pants with the 10% alcohol, but, uh, you don't really feel it. So that's kind of cool. Um, Overall, I think I'm going to give it a 3.75. It's uh, it's good, but I I can feel like I'll have like a glass of this and maybe be done with it. It's um, the lingering aftertaste um, and something like that. It's just a, a little strong. So not uh, not my favorite, but definitely definitely good for sure. I don't. Cool. Pretty good Let's, ratings uh, for everybody. Let's go ahead and move on now to our uh, anime topic. So, what do you guys want to start off with? Uh, Attack on Titan. Does that sound sound like a plan? Yeah, let's yeah, go with let's that. Do it. This episode was let's dope. Do it. So, uh, Attack on Titan episode thirty six, entitled "Charge," um, and you know, very appropriately, the episode leads off with Irwin leading the charge to uh, get Aaron back from uh, such Reiner, a badass. Um, He's so cool. Like here. <laughs> badass dude dude can we talk about for a second like how (laughs) how cool cool he is oh my god (laughs) oh dude dude when he when he gets fucking grabbed by the titan and he's carrying him away and he's like just keep going basically he's just yelling him like just continue and everyone's like right and they just keep going and he's getting dragged off by he's getting dragged by his arm his arm is getting (laughs) chewed off by a titan (laughs) and he's just like he's right there get him <laughs> oh man that he, was so he cool. was he's always been one of my favorite characters just because he's like this stoic like prime example of like a badass and like a strong leader and everything like mm-hmm. that and this episode just kind of epitomizes that like he is he is brave he knows like the importance of the cause and he's like unrelenting he's like you know i have this and he's 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 super strategic too he's like formulated this plan already you know taking in what's going on in the environment you know he's like there's titans here there's no way we're probably gonna stop reiner um let's go ahead and like have them swing around and like fucking tackle each other and like get him down, you know, et cetera, et cetera, to try to get, um, to try to get Aaron back. And so it's just like super calculating, super like, he's just, he's just a cool character. Like he's, he's definitely yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. And he gave a three sentence speech and I was like, hell yeah, let's go fight some shit. <laughs> like, dude, I was, like I you, was you want, you want to follow this dude into battle because he's yeah. so fucking cool. Like, yeah, you're you're like, like, I, I yeah, I'll be gladly like die for you. Like right? and, and being a, <laughs> being a scout is, is so difficult. And there's like, you know, not a lot of people want to be scouts cause they're going outside the walls and it's super dangerous and stuff like that. But when you have a super charismatic and awesome leader like that, it makes it, it makes it a little bit better. At least I think. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, well, you're a police dude and you're safe, but 
look at my leader. He's dope. <laughs> <laughs> well, assuming you're safe as military police, not True. not the ones that are going with them in this mission. True. And and that one guy that gets eaten. <laughs> yeah, because he's all complaining and shit. He's like, yeah, there's just chill. Why are you doing die. this? And he just gets fucking bit. <laughs> yeah, he just gets just chomped up. Chomped on. Yeah. <laughs> That was funny. They're like, wow, there's something wrong with their heads. Chomp. <laughs> well, you just lost your something head. Something wrong so. with your head. You have no awareness. <laughs> it's yeah. it's kind of it's kind of interesting, too, because I guess the military police are supposed to be, quote, the best because you have to graduate, you know, top of your class to get there. But I remember in first season talk, when uh, the scouts were all they were talking about the background of the scouts and stuff. They're like, you grow exponentially stronger as a scout each mission that you come back and survive from. Mm -hmm. And so you like the the ones who have survived are like all like super badass and like awesome. I mean, Levi is kind of the prime example of that, but um, same thing with Irwin, you know, and kind of jumping forward in this episode too, he gets his fucking arm bitten off. (laughs) He throws a tourniquet on that bitch and he's back and fighting. (laughs) You're just like, (laughs) all right, he just fucking rams Bertolt and and is like no armed, just like glaring at him. Like, and he like oh slices shit. he slices the fucking uh thing that's tying Aaron to him off of him. Yeah. He just like shows yeah. up. He's just like, Let's go, let's go, boy. He's like, Let's do this shit. <laughs> Somebody catch me. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, I mean that makes sense though that they're way better, the scouts, because with all the experience they get, it's like you can graduate top of your class, but then you go sit behind walls and do nothing. Yeah, it's like practical experience versus, you know, book smarts. It's like, Mm -hmm. obviously, practical experience is going to win out over anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They should should give Aaron, or not Aaron, (laughs) they should give Erwin um, Titan powers like Aaron so he can regenerate his arm. Like, holy shit. Yeah, (laughs) that would be dope. (laughs) Just comes All we know is like if we if we see next episode and his arm starts steaming, we're like, okay, so something oh, else shit. is going on here. <laughs> He's like, oh, sorry guys, I didn't want to tell you, but I'm a Titan too. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. I'm actually uh, I'm the the Titan with the long hair that ate Aaron's mom. <laughs> but uh, speaking speaking of uh, Titan powers and things like that, I wanted to talk about um, Ymir's uh, relationship and relationship with Krista. Um, a couple important things that she mentioned. Um, first, Ymir says, "I stole the power of the Titans from one of their leaders," um, and. I'm assuming it has to do something with that Beast Titan, something along those lines. But she kind of has to do something to appease the leader of the Titans in order for her to survive. And she's like saying all these things like, you know, I'm scared to die. I'm doing this for me, not for you, Krista. Um, Different things like that. Um, I thought that was super important. Also, she kind of confirms that Krista does know the secrets uh, behind the walls uh, in terms of her involvement with the church and things like that. Um, so super, super interesting, uh, thing there. I'm, I'm curious to find what you guys think about what she says about stealing the power from the Titans. Does it have to do with like Aaron's dad's work or different things like that? What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think in specific that part, it confused me a little bit because I was like, is this true or not? Or is this something she's just telling Krista? But the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? It's actually plausible because we're not sure if what we saw last week, you know, with her getting kicked off of the side of the wall or whatever, um, whether she was given Titan powers through that injection thing or Mm -hmm. if she actually did somehow steal powers beforehand. Cause you know how like the, when she was first scouted to become the quote unquote leader of that cult, they did pick a specific set of orphans, maybe that they knew, could have the power or not and Mm -hmm. so maybe she did steal the power and is on the run from whatever group that bear tolt and and reiner are from and it could possibly even be a situation where they are looking for her but it just seems kind of you know out of place i don't think Mm -hmm. it's necessarily having to do with aaron's father since she had She's honestly like the oldest of the whole group. She hasn't aged in like 60 years or some shit like that. Yeah, because she was asleep mm-hmm. for like 60 years or some yeah. shit. Yeah, so I don't know. What I'm The other thing that kind caught of, me off... Go ahead. Go. Sorry, yeah. What I'm kind of thinking too is, you know, she cuts from her getting picked from those kids to her like sitting on the throne or whatever. Maybe there was some time in between there where they sent her on like a quote, like mission to be a thief and steal something or do something like that. And maybe that was how she was able to be praised and they were able to look up to her because she was able to go 
steal this power or whatever it happens to be and then you know come back and they're like oh my god she actually did it like she is a titan or she is a god um Mm -hmm. you know let's let's praise her she is our leader sort of deal so what do you think alec well sorry i was uh drinking zoned out there for a second and drinking yeah (laughs) um the other thing that uh caught me off guard actually this is this is a little separate is when she um what did she say now now i lost it that's (laughs) that's why i was that's why i was zoned out i was trying to remember exactly what i was what i was thinking is um shit um damn this beer dude (laughs) does it have to do with the with her stealing the power of the Titans and like her trying to oh, appease. No, no, I remember it. It was, uh, no, it's a little off. It's when she's having that same conversation with Krista. Something that threw me off was when Krista was like, what am I supposed to do when they're all trying to eat me? And then she goes, everybody has a couple faults. Like just look past that. That was kind of a weird statement. It just stood out to me because yeah. I wasn't really sure what she meant. And I was, you know, maybe that has to do with, uh, the people she has to appease or whatever. Um, I, and I so don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. That, that was kind of uh, yeah, out of place. It was it was a little weird. I don't. It was I don't know what confusing. they were going for. I don't know that. if it has meaning or if she's just saying random shit to try and. Maybe it was a translation stuff. issue as well. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, so, you know. I didn't pay attention to that know. scene too much. I was just confused at what the fuck was going on with what. It was Amir like Krista and Ymir yelling at each other for a while, and. Uh, but yeah. I definitely think in between when she gets picked as the orphan and then is on the throne. I think between then or b- perhaps between when she's a kid and when she like grows up a little, she does something because uh, the the all the people were saying like, oh, she's going to make us immortal or whatever. And so it's like she hasn't aged for 60 years. So does becoming a Titan make you immortal? Do you just live forever or, yeah. or is I it think the lifespan just way long? I'm wondering she if talks it's because about she's in to, Titan form. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just hibernating or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think talking to about like we talked about it before the the blood of the king or whatever that she mentioned maybe that mm-hmm. has to do with you know maybe she was able to steal that and get in there. She um, ate somebody's we keep heart. going She's back to that. Kids. Yeah, we keep going back to that imagery uh, in the ending song um, with like with you know the, the blonde kids. kids eating the 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 blood or whatever. But and she's obviously not blonde and she's obviously right. not royalty. I mean, she was this kid on the street like just you know an orphan or whatever it happened to be some random and orphan. for her to maybe like get in there and steal that or whatever maybe that's kind of what they're going for there she got the leftovers or stole it <laughs> or did, <laughs> did something i mean no they you know they had they had all that shit they were eating she's like oh man i'm gonna eat some of this oh you <laughs> mean like all the super <laughs> yeah she was like these super aristocratic scraps. kids like oh oh papa i i'm not going to eat this gallbladder maybe i don't I'll like the <laughs> Can you throw it in the trash throw it, can, throw please? It to the poor. Throw it to the poor. I only want the heart. <laughs> the gallbladder's dirty. <laughs> now go buy me three ponies and a carriage and uh, take me around the walls. <laughs> <laughs> I want a moat. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't anyway. know. There's definitely something in, in behind behind that, you know. Definitely. Interesting. Uh, one of the scenes that I uh, really liked, and this is kind of moving on a little bit, is uh, when the entire 104 basically is reunited on this running armored titan, aka Reiner, um, <laughs> and super super powerful scene. And the thing that stands out for me the most is kind of Mikasa. It has abandoned her humanity. Basically, she has no more compassion left. She's sick of all this bullshit. She's just like, "Hey, give me Aaron back, or I'm gonna fucking kill all of you." Like, I don't everybody. care. Um, <laughs> Um, I thought that was a really powerful scene, but I, Mikasa doesn't get a lot of character development. She's kind of bleh and like she is what she is, but it was, it was kind of cool to see her kind of abandon everything and be like, I'm going to kill every single fucking one of you. If you don't give me Aaron back, like you, uh, you two assholes broke down the wall and you know, you caused all this trouble for me in the past and I'm, I'm over it. Like I'm, I'm sick of your gonna shit. Fucking throw down now, bitches. Like, let's go. You see <laughs> so that, that when was... she's talking to Krista too. 
Yeah. And oh, she's yeah, like, exactly. and she, she's just like that. They did a good job of animating her on that too. And they like zoomed in on her eye. Cause she was super intense in that. And she was just like, do you pick Aaron or Ymir? Are you going to get in my way too? And then she's like, are you going to die Ymir, or no? Yeah, is exactly. What she's she like, say. am I going to have to kill you? Or are you going <laughs> to just stay out of my way? And then Ymir there's like a, um, starts to move and she's like, don't do it. You'll die. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> there's a, a screen cap that uh, I'm going to get for the YouTube this week. And it's, uh, it's another one of me Asa's faces where she's like death glaring uh, oh, yeah. Bertolt uh, when he's like behind Reiner's hand on his neck oh, like she's oh, just like in between the fingers or whatever yeah. <laughs> he's like oh. yeah she's like looking through the hole and he's like <laughs> make so sure uh, make sure you look to the YouTube for that clip because that oh, I, I made special note of that I'm like all right I'm getting this one for sure she is that was scary freaky. as fuck oh my god yeah <laughs> that's like that's like being in a horror movie and you're like looking out a window and then up pops the the murderer it like in your face like <laughs> dude that was yeah that was dude, that she was knows hole, she knows honestly. like I already fucked up once I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not, not gonna, gonna miss I'm not gonna miss again. Yeah, it's like if I killed you before, I wouldn't be dealing with this bullshit. <laughs> Rolando, I wanted to ask you, and I think this was kind of the most important part of the episode. Um, what do you make of what um, Bertolt says when um, they say, you know, w- he's kind of like, we were, f- do you think everybody just wants to go and like kill people? Oh like, he, we were like forced to do this. Like, what What do you think he was, is going about that? Like, okay. I'm super curious to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I... I specifically, when I was watching this episode, I was like, ah, oh, this reasoning is so annoying. It's, yeah. they're trying to make the Baratold and Reiner seem more human and more like you, they, they're trying to give them something redeemable about them to make you want to feel sorry for them. And it's just, I don't feel sorry for them whatsoever because yeah. it feels like a cop out. That they're like, oh, well, I mean, like, do you think we want to kill everyone? We're forced to do it. It's like, oh, really? You're forced to do it? Like, really, if you didn't feel bad about it whatsoever, you just wouldn't do it. Like, someone that's truly, um, I guess you'd say selfless, isn't going to, would just, like, submit and die and be you know, a martyr for the cause. You are selfish, just for the fact that you are following through and killing a lot of people, there is no way that you going and becoming like becoming a human and like joining the scouts makes you any more um, doesn't atone for your sins whatsoever, especially because you are actually still on a mission to find this whatever coordinate thing or whatever. It's just mm-hmm. it it's just super super annoying and i think that it's this stupid cop out that that may be part of the writing but at the same time in their minds in reiner and Bertolt's eyes they're using it as this cop out to kind of be like oh you know like you have to feel sorry for us because you know like we're like we we don't want to do this it's like no you did this (laughs) you made this decision to do it you have to own up for your own actions, and there's no way that this is atoning for anything because you have an ulterior motive. Yeah, That's it. it was annoying. What, it irritated me too. What it at least tells us, though, is that there is some sort of higher power. These guys aren't like it. They're like not the end. There is somebody calling the shots. Um, so that's, that's kind of good to know that, uh, you know, there, I, and I think it all comes back to this beast Titan. I mean, I think. You know, it's so cryptic about what's going on with him and different things like that. But I think he plays a super integral role as to, uh, you know, who's calling the shots uh, on the terms of the the Titan end or, you know, if they are even are Titans, maybe they're just like banished humans. You know, we don't we don't really know. I guess also from what he was saying, it kind of seemed like. I, like from what he was saying, it sounded like if we didn't do this, then somebody else would have anyways, because then they had that half, you know, halfway through the episode, they had that that thing where it was saying, oh, there's special Titans and then normal Titans. And they're obviously special Titans. So, you know, if it wasn't Reiner, Reiner and Bertolt, would they have just killed them and gotten two different people to try and do it, you know, and That's then true. do the same exact thing. So I, I'm wondering if they, you know. Partially, they had the choice. They were like, you either do it and you die or you don't do it and you die or you do it and you keep going. And they're like, well, we don't want to do it. It's like, well, we're going to kill you and find two other people. And they're like, well, fine, then we'll yeah. just stay alive and do it. Um, 
So I'm wondering if that's like part of I it. I think too. their backstory you know, is a little power. interesting because I mean we know now that you know Bertold Reiner and that other guy who uh, Ymir eats they were outside of the walls, um, mm-hmm. and so this like I'm gonna call him like the Beast Titan faction or whatever probably found them and was like, hey, here's the deal: you join us, we give you these powers. And you follow us, or you die. And yeah, or we I mean, eat they're you. more than likely going to choose life. And in this, you mm-hmm. know, situation, they do so. Especially um, since they don't have any connection to the people in the wall, since they're living outside the wall, they have no reason to be like, yeah, yeah let's yeah. protect those people. They're like, let's protect us and what's left of us, because there was a titan who ate our friend. <laughs> right. Still, there's no reason for them to be like, you have to feel sorry for us. Like, no, I don't you have to own up them. to your own actions. Well, they're yeah. trying to justify their actions, and, I mean, it's obviously not going to work. I, they're trying they, to do it to themselves. They literally, like they literally killed, like, three quarters of humanity by yes, destroying that wall. Exactly. <laughs> There's no way you can atone for that by going, by like, ooh, we're killing titans, too. It's like, you killed, like, three titans. <laughs> Maybe more, but I'm just exaggerating. He's more like trying to justify it to himself, it, I think, and just yeah. be like, oh, it's not, I don't have to do this. I didn't want to do this. Like, uh, you know, trying to make himself feel better or whatever. But it was irritating to me, too. And I was just like, this is kind of stupid. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. um, the last thing I want to talk about, too, is, um, um, what's his name? Arm. Not right. Is it Armin? I blonde hair. Erwin blonde and Arwen. Kid? They're both blonde and they yeah. both <laughs> they both mess mm-hmm. me up and this beer is ten percent alcohol. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Armin uh brings up Annie uh to Bertold, and that's kind of like a sore spot for him because he's like we've talked about it and, and they've talked about it on the show as well. It's like, you know, he had a crush on her and different things like that. And he's like, So guys, you're just gonna abandon her while she's, she's being tortured inside the walls. And he goes, Shut <laughs> up. Don't you touch me. But he said <laughs> then, uh, before he did that, he was like, What do I have to lose? So I'm curious like what do you guys think by him saying that? What is he losing by doing that? By like by asking telling Bear told those things, you know, because he was like, What do I have to lose? My life or whatever? And then he pauses for a second, or he thinks that and then he pauses and then he starts talking about Annie. So it's like or is that just what spurned on the question? I think it's just like, you know, something he's saying to like, what do I have to give up in order to change the situation? You know, I don't know if it's necessarily something like in that case, you could probably think he gives up his, you know, like a bit of his humanity with like by, you know, using this sort of immoral, quote unquote, low blow, low blow kind Mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But that's when uh, our boy comes back in. Missing an arm and uh, yeah, you know, saves Aaron, you know, <laughs> good shit Dude, there. Erwin's um, a beast. And we're, uh, we're kind of left with this uh, ominous figure of uh, that long haired, creepy grin Titan who ate uh, Aaron's bomb mm-hmm. uh, coming back to haunt him. So <laughs> super, in. super looking forward to next week's episode. I think next week's They're gonna be cl- really good. Yeah. They're gonna cliffhanger us, but I, oh, yeah. I hope, I hope that they'll, you know, maybe take a season off. You know, that's fine, and then yeah. come back strong and you know, get, give mm-hmm. us some more episodes. I hope so. they come back in the fall. And the yeah. next kind episode of is now. called um, Scream, so I think it's it's gonna be crazy. I'm looking for it. I want some crazy shit to go down and be awesome. <laughs> that's all I want. That's all I want. That's all I can ask for, right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. Let's uh, let's move on then. Uh, what are you guys feeling? You feeling soccer quest? Or you feeling Aramanga? I'm gonna throw it out to you guys. What do you want to do? I feel like there's less mm. to talk with Aramanga, so let's just get let's that out of the way. Manga. Get that out of the way. Cool. Do it. So we have uh, episode ten: um, Masamune Izume and the younger senpai, referring to uh, Muramasa. And I'm gonna get those two names. Like, I was typing my notes and stuff like that, and I kept typing the other one, and those two names are, like, just too similar. But anyway, um, I was kind of talking to Alec a little bit earlier, and, you know, we're kind of feeling, we're kind of feeling Muramasa, you know, she's, uh, she's kind of redeemed herself in our eyes. She's getting better, uh, Rolando, for sure. You, you were making puking noises. Uh, what do you, what do you, what do you think of, uh, the senpai Kohai or whatever, whatever the hell she is? <laughs> okay. Granted, she is a little bit better this episode. I still don't really like her. She's still mm. better than Sagiri. 
Okay, well, like, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to be than worse than Sigiri. <laughs> in my, eyes, I I like. think she's getting better. I still think Elf Yamada is best grill currently, um, but Muramasa is getting better in my eyes. Well, we'll have to see where it goes, but like I could see myself shipping Muramasa. You know, she's a little bit more developed. Um, she's more. She's <laughs> she's more success. She's she's more successful, and she's got like this neurotic like stalker complex that I'm kind of into. But we, we don't need yeah, to get, where, we don't need your masculine tendencies are coming out. <laughs> where where he's, I think, uh, I, think, I think everybody's uh, everybody knows that about Muramasa. where she's like oh Muramasa talks to a to a fake uh, <laughs> Masamune and then how did you know that and he's like can you stop doing that please <laughs> and then she's on the couch with the with the you know the little white like puff of smoke coming out of her mouth and she looks like a ghost she's like uh. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out here guys I'm all about it. I'm all about it. You're all about it. People <laughs> just randomly having co- fake conversations with you while you're not there. Yes. <clears throat> very right very much so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, you do you, dude. You do you. No judgment zone. <laughs> um <laughs> couple different things I want to talk about. Like, why did they have to be so fucking racist this show? They I think Muramasa said Yankee like 15 times. Yeah. Like, what what was up I, with that? I think <laughs> Isn't she sp- Go ahead, go ahead. I'm like, isn't she supposed to be like European? She's not supposed to be from America. Europeans aren't <laughs> called Yankees. Knows, <laughs> I, no, no, just... I think I think in specific in Japanese when they use the term Yankee, um, it's either to refer to someone that looks American, or it's um, to refer to someone that is like very delinquent like. And I mean, I can kind of see it going either way because. Elf is kind of like because she never does she, her work. She doesn't do anything. Like doesn't mm-hmm. she's not very responsible and like kind of mm-hmm. like slacks off and like doesn't like follow rules and all that. Although it probably mm-hmm. is like leading to the fact that she kind of looks like she's American because <laughs> she's blonde. Right. <clears throat> that makes sense. I guess it's just they use it a lot. They did. They she kept calling her Yankee, 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 Yankee. It's like I'm, 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 I'm over it, like whatever. <laughs> so what annoyed um, me? I got triggered by this episode only at one scene. Otherwise, the episode I thought it was actually pretty funny and enjoyable. But it was when they were playing the Kings game. Is that what they called it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And they brought Sigiri into it. That That's I was like, I, yeah. do why do you need to bring her? She's not That's needed what I here. To talk about so, yeah. <laughs> it's like they had to ruin a perfectly good episode by bringing that piece of shit yeah. like into it and like it they just bring up the same old tropes over again what panties are you wearing yeah take it's, off your clothes yeah. it's her same jokes like <clears throat> everyone else in the show is getting some kind of character development like elf yamada we had last episode with her whole like confession essentially and then this episode we have muramasa basically being like yeah I love Masamune and then going on the other side and saying, you're going to fall in love with me. And then they bring Sigiri in and she's like, oh, take off your clothes. And what panties are you wearing? And then it turns <laughs> out she's not wearing any panties. And once again, she ends up on the couch looking it. like a ghost. But <laughs> I yeah, knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Is I'm like, wearing when, a kimono. When, when, <laughs> when Elf is like, oh, like, oh, I get what's going on. I'm like, she's not, like, she's going commando for sure. Yeah. She's and then Sigiri has she's to fucking kimono. point it out because she's like fucking yeah. 12 years old. I just, Guys, I have she's to say. a traditional girl wearing a kimono. Of course, she's not wearing any panties. I have to say, when they, like, reveal, quote unquote, revealed the fact that she wasn't wearing panties, they close upped on her butt for, like, 25 seconds, dude. Again, it was yeah. just, it was just of that. Random fan service. I was like, I of was course like oh, did. my God. It's just, it's just a kimono butt for, like, 25 seconds. It's absurd. Uh, so, anyways, granted, but besides that, the episode was funny to me. Granted, I'll agree with you guys that in my, like, I personally view muramasa a bit higher now after this episode i still think that she's kind of annoying (laughs) she does have balls though because she 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 fucking just yelled out that i'm in love with masamune in front of all those in front of everyone i I literally i literally wrote muramasa confesses by yelling and shit yeah (laughs) 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 Yeah. no she's she's got guts 
For sure. And even uh, Masamune kind of recognized that. He's like, wow, you're so cool. But stop, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> like, he just kind of... I like, think it was don't. it was kind of cool and shows her devotion to that, you know, she kind of drove Masamune to, you know, continue writing and stuff like that through her, like, a, quote, anonymous, uh, uh, like not love letters, but like fan letters and things like mm-hmm. that. And so that was cool to kind of see that, you know, and she has been rooting on, rooting him on from the sidelines and different things like that. It's so that cool was, that was cool to see. Forward too. Cause it, it was kind of predictable. Then, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it was I, nice I, to see, you know, it was nice yeah. to see once it came out, you knew that was going to happen, but it was nice yeah, to see. Yeah. Like they were like, she's been this person. Now he's that person. It's kind of nice. A humanity. Yeah. Knowing how Kyosuke uh, is, there's no, no there's no reason why I wouldn't think that Masamune would do the same thing. Kyosuke, <laughs> um, is that the writer? No, no, that's the main character in Orimo. Oh, yeah. we call sure him uh, Kyosuke or uh, sm- Smoothske because he's so smooth oh, with the ladies. That's smooth, why I have yeah. no idea who you're talking about because you guys always say Smoothske. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck any of these people are. Let's Dude, you're gonna on. when when this season finishes, you're, you're gonna, gonna have gonna to watch watch, go back and watch Oriemo and just I don't get like, want no, 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 like I don't want I'm gonna, to. I'm, like, you'll you'll like it for a while it. and then you'll watch the final OVA yeah. and you'll be like, well, why did I just waste my time? We gripe about it, but it's really the way it ends is the is what leaves you know like the salt in your mouth oh okay. but alex so just don't watch here's the, the thing well i mean you here's have the thing, to watch alex. the ending otherwise it doesn't make here's sense. the thing so there's there's i think there's four ending ovas there's either three or four i can't remember but during one of them the little sister character fights the childhood friend character and they are pulling their hair and shit oh that yeah, is yeah. Tight. shit that's a fucking <laughs> that's like the cat best fight. part actual cat fight all right you know like cat fights glasses are, cool. are broken like oh shit be- granted, like, li- I, not even slapping they are like punching the shit out of gr- each other granted like, it is awesome i'm not gonna lie as much as i don't like kirino i actually don't like um i, I don't even remember her name because she's that glasses glasses, glasses brown hair generic glasses Osana friend, bitch. i don't remember her name because i didn't <laughs> like her even more <laughs> Yeah, she was kind of annoying. I mean, we we all know that either it's it's between ISA or Koroneko. I mean, those are the two waifus. ISA I have one is the one I personally choose, but Koroneko is for sure the one that makes the most sense. Yeah, I have definitely. One definitely. question though. That episode that What's you're that? talking about with the fight, is it as violent an ending as School Days? No. Nothing will okay. be ever. <laughs> then I can watch that. Okay. I just need to make sure because I'm still I still have PTSD from watching that. <laughs> You're right? welcome. I just have to make sure. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you telling me. Back, oh, watch this. Story. It's really good. Backstory on this is uh Alec was watching Angel Beats off of my recommendation. I, I had just started watching <laughs> anime again. Let's add that in. This was like thank god i didn't stop <laughs> you watched angel beats off my recommendation he's like oh what else should you watch should i watch and i'm like oh you know you should watch school days and i wanted to test to see like whether he would because like you know it's the first recommendation see whether he <laughs> continues on or not <laughs> so angel beats was really good i really enjoyed angel beats so i was like i have no reason not to trust your opinion and then all of a sudden i watch this and i get to the last episode i'm like what the fuck is going on ah <laughs> uh, so triggered i'm still triggered it's been like four years and i'm still triggered you need to watch uh, school live too it's not as brutal but it's definitely a nice twist in there for you school so. live did you watch that yeah. one it's the I one with the their the delusional That's main familiar. character they've got like a zombie apocalypse they're living in the school oh yeah i watched that one that one yeah yeah, yeah I, that that one. One. I, I really like that, that one was good anyway. i thought that one was fun to watch that, that one was, was a good. specific show where like just i'm kind of you know nerding out a little bit but like they used sound design very well on a particular episode in that <laughs> if you didn't know maybe you I, should do I a, a, a blog post about it <laughs> yeah maybe. a video a video blog about it maybe it do was it. good it was a while ago i'd have to find yeah. out what episode yeah. it was <laughs> just watch the whole thing again <laughs> um so anyway uh, back to arrow manga you know our harem is growing it's progressing we all know how it's gonna end fucking sagiri is gonna win Sadly. it's gonna piss me yeah. off but bleh. But uh, anyway, any, anything else you guys uh, you guys want to add? Um, I think he's just trying to trigger us. He's like, hey, I'm going to make all these other girls super awesome and you're going to love them. 
And then he's not going to go with any of them because I hate all You're going to fall all, in love with people. me. And I'm going to get a special <laughs> ending sequence dedicated to me. Yeah. And but then he's going to end up with fucking sounds... Chris, dude. Ooh. <laughs> what about Mary? He's going to... He's gonna t- <laughs> he's gonna turn out with the uh, the the other male writer who just keeps. I don't even out. remember his name because he's so. Formidable. I don't either. He just like he just like he is like the walking gay joke. It's just like yeah. everything happens and he's just like running out of the room. He's like, oh, it's that gay. gay dude. He's in the king's in the king's game. It's like Yosuke. one kiss two, and he's like ah, and he just leaves. He just pieces out. <laughs> he's fucking Yosuke, dude. BL, dude. That's the moral of the story. BL. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's jump into soccer request guys. You ready to move on? Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, episode 10 this week, the, uh, dragon soft spot. Uh, I'm going to open it up to you, Alec, uh, real quick, uh, before we get started though. Um, was anybody just like enamored with, uh, baby Ruri- uh, Rudiko oh. when she's like in kindergarten? That was like the most precious so thing I've ever seen in my whole <laughs> life. Like, yeah, she's it's got her like, reading her like, <laughs> She's got her like fucking uh, oddities book, and she's got her like little like doll, and it's just like that was just, just so chilling. fucking cute. Like. Yeah, she was uh, adorable. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Alec, uh, what do you what do you think of this episode? Um, you know, it it, it followed the the um kind of path the show's been taking with it's going like one girl at a time. Each one of them's having their own. I would say midlife crisis, but none of them are that old. To be it's having quarter a midlife life crisis. crisis. It's, it's quarter, quarter life. life they're, crisis. they're all having their own quarter life crisis. And uh, and now it's it's Rudico's time. So uh, we kind of had her wandering around just depressed all the time. Um, although she seemed confused. I don't know if she can be depressed. I think she's just like a super because uh, what's her name? The the girl with the ponytail. Uh, fuck. Sanai. The, Sanai. No. Shiri. Is it Sanai? The. She already, yeah. She told her you've changed, and then from then on, Ruriko's like, "Who am I?" Like, it's like she's having a crisis of who she is as a person. Like, it's just yeah. That's what I wrote too. She's having a crisis of identity. <laughs> yeah, and and so although the thing that the like episode. it just for me the thing that like it kind of just like spurns it on. It's just like just for the sake of the story. It's just like nothing really even triggers it. It's just like. <laughs> Oh, girls are dancing, so I'm gonna be triggered and think about my entire life and how sad I am. Yeah, she can't smile like, while just dancing. Like, That's what spurns it. Yeah. She. And she, now I'm gonna go sit that, in the corner and cry. Like she was. She had that conversation with was it Shiori's grandmother, and she was saying like, no, "Why can't the you wi- dance?" It's the wife. The of wife the of the tourism uh, board head. Oh, okay. The wife of the tourism, and she was saying like, "I don't dance because they say it's for like." because I have to, and I don't like that or whatever. And so, you know, it was, it was, that was interesting to hear. Like, that's a good, that's a good reason. And I'm okay with that. But just like, you don't need to rethink your entire fucking life. Yeah. Just because somebody brought up this dance that you haven't thought about in like 10 years. Like I remember (laughs) she had that flashback where she was thinking about everyone dancing and she sat in the corner and then the look on her face was kind of like, after seeing, um, cause that was while they were ha- doing the dance in the park or whatever. It kind of seemed like she regretted not learning it because she couldn't do the dance with them right then or something like that. That's kind of yeah. the vibe I got from it there. And so maybe Definitely. she's like having that kind of thought process. Cause she's like, Hmm, until now I didn't really re- regret it, but now I have these friends who are like all doing these things and I want to do it with them, but I can't and because she feels I like didn't she's learn changed, it. Right? So and, yeah. And she feels like she's changed. So she's just like, who the, what the fuck is going on? And, uh, I think what really like, she's probably going to have a big change because of that con that, um, conversation that the tourism head had with one of the girls from Tokyo. He was saying like, Oh, it's because of a dragon. And there was all oh, this yeah. backstory. And so now I feel like she's going to want to learn it because there's a dragon involved and not because <laughs> she, and she's like, Oh, it's like mythical. And like, cause she loves, you know, like the occult and stuff. And so she's going to be like, Oh, there's a dragon. It's not just because I have to learn it because it's tradition. There's like a cool history behind it and there's a dragon. <laughs> and so the I dragon. think like that, because she left right after the conversation, so I think that's like a, a was a 
a big thing to her. That conversation is going to have some sort of impact on her. Well, then she was just like walking around in the rain. Like, well, yeah. it was, like she was sad. Just well, I mean, she didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, it's true. She was walking. But I mean, she's like not even like trying to get out of the rain. She's yeah. just like fucking slow, like walking as slow as possible. Like, oh, it's raining. OK, like, she was like, she's walking home and then it starts raining. And then she's like walking, 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 walking. And then she stops and she's like, oh, it's raining. And then we we cut back to other people, and then we go to the bus stop, and she's, like, shivering. I'm like, yeah, because as soon as it started raining, you should have run to a bus stop, but you're soaking wet because you're stupid. <laughs> Rolando, can we no, can we agree that she is the, out of it. the Yusuke uh, from Persona 5? She is the Yusuke of this show? Yeah, I mean, she's a bit special, but she's... <laughs> Like She's as cute, much though. as much as I think that uh, like Yusuke is autistic, just like not in like a <laughs> negative way, but like he he does have like a specific like he's very creative and like that may yeah. like subtract from a little bit of like other social aspects in his personality. I think that Ririko like in the same way has like, you know, this adorable quality to her to her in in the fact that like she's got like sp- certain quirks whether like it might not necessarily like mean she's like somewhat towards the autistic spectrum but she does you know have certain like special um which what you call it like she's got very um unique strengths to her she um, loves might, the i don't think it's specifically loves. autism <laughs> yeah but like yeah, she but she, she has doesn't yeah. care about everything else <laughs> yeah she doesn't care about anything else in which case like i don't think it's not necessarily autism like yusuke but mm-hmm. <laughs> she does have like this like adorable side to her that's like oh like you know that's kind of like it's kind of cute that it like you're kind of awkward in this sense but like it's kind of like you know what where they call what they call quote unquote gap moe is like Mm-hmm. There's this expectation you have, and then there's this reality, and that gap is what, like, you know, adds to the cute value, cuteness value. The interest in something? Yes. Or someone? Okay. Well, that and sense, Alec yeah. kind of mentioned that she she doesn't care about anything, but there is one thing that she cares about, and I think it's, like, fitting in with these girls or being accepted by them. And she doesn't, like, outwardly show it that often. I think but that's new, I think, I think she does want to be accepted by them, and she does want to help out. You know, when she has to go home early and she's on her phone and, like, you know, her grandma's like, oh, come home early. She She's, like, having this debate with herself. She's like, I, I want to stay here and I want to be a part of this, but at the same time, I need to fulfill my expectations of, you know, I'm – not a hundred percent devoted to the tourism board. I want to be with the merchants because my grandma is part of the merchants and different things like that. So she's having kind of this crisis of where like, I don't know where I'm supposed to devote myself to. And because of that's kind of tearing her apart between the two factions. I think it's cause her wanting to fit in is like a new development for her. Mm-hmm. Cause like, that's what I was saying is she, the thing she really loves, which I immediately think back to when she finds that cameraman in the alleyway and she just spews off all the specifications of the camera that he's holding. <laughs> oh, is that a D blah, 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 And she just lists off everything. And she is, she loves and is super passionate about the things that she's interested in and not the other things. And up until now, I feel like she didn't really care about, cause obviously she didn't learn the dance. She sat in a corner, she read by herself and then she was making her little extinct shrimp by herself until she it's already not a shrimp. showed up. <laughs> I, I have a whole thing written for this. <laughs> it is not a shrimp. I'm just gonna I know I didn't that. want to say the name though because I can't actually remember the name of the, okay, <laughs> of I, the I, animal. Uh, just as a segue, so I looked this <laughs> segue up. Segue on. I like I looked this up. So it is a, it is called an a- animal caris. Okay, and so this thing <laughs> okay. is an arthropod from the Cambrian uh, period, yeah. Ooh, this which is, is before, when okay. before Ex- humans. When this, is the Cambrian period exactly? It is before humans. I did not look <laughs> okay. up this specific part. Um, okay. It is before humans, Alec. It is when okay, single-cell organisms it. still existed in, as the majority, but multicellular organisms started appearing before this. I did look that much up. Um, so <laughs> It's the first geological period of the Paleozoic 
era. Okay, you l- actually looked it up. I didn't. I just Googled it. Um, <laughs> so, like, we get this scene. I'm that glad Alex's you can Google. About. Yeah. <laughs> Alex talking about this scene where it's essentially like where Shiori and Ririko become friends. Where they're like, I don't know, like eight mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, and they're, uh, they're like making shit in art, art class and. With clay. With clay. And Ririko makes this clay animalcaris. Animalcaris, sorry. <laughs> And um, shrimp. and it Sherry <laughs> thinks it's a shrimp and that it's something edible. And um, she says, oh, is that a shrimp? That looks delicious. And Ryuko's <laughs> like, no, you can't eat this. It's extinct. It's and then dead. I looked what looked up what it was. And it's this fucking sea monster that's like one <laughs> meter long. And <laughs> just in case you didn't know, one meter is like fucking half of the average human height. <laughs> so like with like actually over half of it and it's this fucking thing with like two large appendages at the fucking front of its body it's got an exoskeleton and the way it eats is it like uses its underjaw to like latch onto something and then uses those two appendages to like freaking twist and turn like whatever is in front of it and snap it open and then just like suck up the innards it's this so it's, a, <laughs> it's a fucking prehistoric predator. it's a prehistoric giant spider type thing it's not even a spider it's like a prehistoric well, cockroach shrimp thing well, that like spiders, wants to eat they other shrimp up, things they wrap you up and then they <laughs> freeze you and then they suck out your insides. That's what spiders do. Yeah, it's a sea monster. Oh I don't ever... So, I'm glad anyways. it's extinct. I don't ever want to run into that type of sort of thing. It's, it's disgusting. I don't even remember what I was talking about. But oh, one thing I did notice was that um, but, these things called trilobites or whatever, they look like Kabuto from Pokemon. Yep. Um, those things <laughs> roll up. They can come back. Yeah, you know, like shrimp. You know, like they can roll up yeah. and uh, and uh, you know turn into a ball. That mm-hmm. is like an they they think that's an evolution that resulted from these freaking animalcaris things. Because they so I know you. I know you Snails. guys played Wind Waker. I know you yeah. guys played Wind Waker. Love Do you remember game. those monsters? Like they're in like the where you get the fire arrows or not the fire arrows. They're uh, in the place where you need the ice arrows to freeze the volcano, and then you go in there, and there's like those little like centipede looking monsters that you yeah, can yeah, like yeah, roll yeah. up, and then mm-hmm. I think I think it's like that. It looks like that. Probably yeah. It could be yeah. It's uh, what are they called? Um, it's like a worm thing. Is it Mulgara? Those things? No, no, it's not those. That's a that's a boss. I think. Anyways, I know what you're talking about. Magtail? Yeah. The Magtails? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what they're called. I'm trying to remember the name. Something like, something <laughs> like that. You use them yeah. to put them on the Switch. You get the, uh, I think you get like the, the bracelets that let you lift heavy shit. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. We're getting, we're getting distracted. I don't even, I don't even remember what we ta- were ta- what I was talking about before we came I'm gonna, to I'm the I'm going to bring us back. Boys. I'm going to bring us back. The yeah, one, bring us uh, back. One thing, bring us back later. 10%. 10% the one thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, it's, 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 it's TM. TM. Dude, mine's um, almost gone. The, uh. the other, uh, the other thing that the uh, that we need to talk about is uh, how the tourism board is now dealing with this new issue. It's like this singles tour or a matchmaking tour that was, by the way, awkward as fuck. Oh yeah, dude. Like, I was. <laughs> did, can I ask? Can I ask? Did either of you two imagine yourself? in that situation not necessarily like yes like, i definitely did mm-hmm. okay like even it, even as the guy in the town but reverse it and there's a bunch of girls and you're one of three dudes either way it's super uncomfortable i'm just sitting there thinking well, like this is really awkward <laughs> at the same time there those three girls are there and they know they're there to look for someone to marry they're at yeah. the age yeah. that they're yeah. looking you know to get married they're at all 30 the, years old all those dudes and they're were not so married cringe. yet. <laughs> they're all Christmas those guys cakes, were so apparently cringe. to Japanese society. All those guys yeah. were so cringe. That's all like a couple of, That's I was what like, I wrote. Ugh. That's exactly what I wrote. I was cringing like, for like half awkward. the episode because of that. I'm like stop, please stop, please stop. Like just And they're all stop. like fucking like on Maki's younger brother Kosuke. They're like, "Ooh, he's cute." It's like he's in high school. Yeah. He's like yeah. 16. He's like 17. Yeah. And then that one girl's no no the the one girl was saying that and then the other girl's like isn't that illegal? <laughs> and, she, and then and then the, well the then like all the her. all the other 
all the other dudes are using like these cheesy ass like pickup yeah, oh lines and, like the one girl's like into it and i'm just like yeah. jesus christ well you know, she I, was I thought into, it was she funny was on the, the bus. bus driver and he yeah married. i thought it was fu- funny on the bus when <laughs> it was like oh he's not bad and then he's like um i'm just your bus drivers today but if any of you princess desires and he just winks and then two of them blush i'm like oh my she's god like, and the, what, what the a third god one's dude like, what a god that actually worked on you it's like yeah the third one's like the <laughs> sense of reason like you guys are stupid and then we got uh, fucking then, Sandalson. He's like we have Sandalson, fucking yeah. playing the violin. <laughs> he's, he's he's playing the song that was for a so wedding. Playing the fucking vi- awkward. The bridal like, march, like, what the fuck? He's playing the bridal march on the violin. And he just comes in playing at the beginning. I have to say that fucking was really pomp and circumstance. Bad. Like and then he sup, comes in. And then what's her name? Pink haired main girl. She's like, why are you playing that? <laughs> so. Yeah, it was awkward. Really awkward. Yeah, that whole part of the episode is awkward. Yeah. The final thing Cringe. before we wrap it up, guys. What the fuck was this dude coming out of the water at the end? Dude. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Random. He's the dragon. What? He's, He's the dragon. dragon. He's the dragon. They, they He's dragon son. The dragon. The dragon. They, they don't want us. Dude. They want us thinking. I mean, they want they us. They want us to think it. he's the dragon. The dragon broke because Tokyo girl was scared and she knocked it over. Well, I mean, you're assuming it's Tokyo. It could be any major city. No. Oh, well, they girl. said, aren't they coming yeah, maybe from... Maybe she's from the old say, capital, bro. Maybe she's from Kyoto. How are you oh, about to sorry. assume her city, I'm going bro? by the translations, okay? And they said people, three girls from Tokyo. Oh, I didn't... In, at, one, at one of the points. Oh, it was one I of the know. points that were like, you have to convince these three girls from Tokyo or whatever. I so heard, I, they could I have just put from that. the city. Uh, yeah, it, I think they, they that's said what they, from the city. I saw Tokyo at some point. Anyways, city girls, she knocked it over because she was scared like a bitch. <laughs> oh my god, it's the dragon. I'm gonna look it's cute the and not dragon this thing in over. human form. It's human form dragon, dude. I'm telling you. Human form Speaking dragon. Of that same That's the chick, only explanation. That same chick is the one that had the fucking red soma noodle on her shoulder, and the fucking thirsty yeah. as fuck <laughs> police officer dude. He's like, oh, this connects us to the red thread of fate. <laughs> And she's like, dude, you thirsty as fate. fuck, dude. I like, I like how the main girls, one of them's like, is that actually working? The other's like, it's not very romantic, though. <laughs> it's like, Everyone's it's fucking thirsty. Even that, because, like, that sausage fest <laughs> barbecue where, like, the dudes... Oh my from that's the, what I was about to say. Dude, this, people the, from another town there's like, showed up. There's, like, 20, there's like 20 <laughs> dudes and, like, these three chicks. And, like, nobody's talking to the um, tourism board chicks. Like, go for right? Sunai. Like, dude, go for, go for, go for Shiri, uh, Yoshino. Like, I don't understand, like, why... If you're gonna show up from another town, at least talk to a single woman there. Yeah, don't, like, don't just be just, like, like yeah. sit oh, there with like your only? dick in hand, just like talking <laughs> to each other. Like, oh, you, dude. You, dude, she's pretty cute, right? It's like, yeah, she's cute oh, over there, right? For the, oh, no, you, you here for the sausage her. fest, bro? Yeah. You here for the barbecue <laughs> sausage fest, <laughs> dude? It's all about uh, what? What are the characters? So there's Shiori, uh, Ririko. Who's who's the Sanai? Sanai is the, the, is the actor, IT girl, actress. No, Maki's oh, no, actress. Maki is the... Maki's actress. And then pink hair. Yoshino. 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 All right. Yeah, no. It, I would go for Yoshino. I personally think... You would go for Shiori. Shiori, I personally think, is the best. But I also, I also like Yoshino. More. Yeah. I, I like, like, uh, I like Sanai. I like well, Sanai. Maki, Maki is pretty, right. but like... You know... She she doesn't have the same quirks as the the others. She's like an no. o- she's obstinate, yeah. which is annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, stop being obstinate. <laughs> anyway, so ten percent alcohol by volume, boys. How you feeling? Drunk. Um, pretty good. Pretty I'm pretty good. drunk. I I ate I ate like eight or nine raviolis and some salad I'm, before this, and I'm feeling pretty good. I ate like fucking seven hours ago, so mm, I ate like forty five minutes. Ago. Well, lucky like, for you. I'm not allowed to hour. eat pizza, but like, if I could have if a pizza, I could right, have now, pizza right now, that would be fucking oh. amazing. Oh, pizza right now. <laughs> you were talking Dude, about pizza earlier. Anyway. I was craving, pizza, craving pizza before. Yeah, I was craving pizza, and that's why we're talking Dude, about it right now. Dude, I was craving pizza, and then I had raviolis, but I still want pizza. Fuck. Oh, fuck Jay. Oh, well, fuck Jay. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's <laughs> let's wrap this up before we ramble anymore. Um... You know, it's been it's been an awesome episode. I think we need to do more ten percent alcohol by volume beers yeah. uh, in the future. Yeah, with uh, uh, one point nine point four uh, fluid <laughs> ounces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, not as much. But, uh, that, 
<laughs> Everybody. Anyway, likes a lot of um, <laughs> you know, it's been it's been a great episode. Um, you know, thanks, Alec and Rolando. Um, if you guys want to check out our WordPress, please feel free to do so. Anime on draft.wordpress.com. And that's going to take you to all our social media, um, as well as checking out the YouTube. Um, definitely uh, take a look at that. We always put up funny screen caps and different things like that. Uh, and as you're going to have those specific episode. slides you mentioned. So yeah, definitely, definitely. So be on the lookout for that. Um, anything else you guys want to add before we uh, sign off? keep an eye out for the uh, Sakurada Reset uh, special yes. episode again this coming week and possibly uh, a blog post about um, something Belgian I mentioned stuff. earlier about Belgian stuff. Belgian yes, stuff. there you go. <laughs> Belgian stuff. I couldn't remember. <laughs> 10%, you know, ABV. ABV, so, dude. Yep, ABV. I know uh, <laughs> Rolando and I were talking about streaming some uh, Guilty Gear too, so maybe we'll uh, oh, yeah. beat each other up in some fighting Watch waifus. Start. So. <laughs> Watch me suck it out on your main. Check it out on our Twitch channel, million. which I think is twitch.tv forward slash anime on draft if you want to definitely. check that out. And we'll definitely so, uh, put a post up on Twitter for that. Definitely. Well, uh, thanks, guys. It was a lot of fun, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Later, guys and girls. Oh, you look sexist or something? No, I said and girls, dude. Yeah, but you added <laughs> that like way later. Yeah, <laughs> it was an afterthought. <laughs>